Hi, this is Tim from Cairo Up, and earlier this week I had a birthday, got a great gift from Annals of Medicine. They published a study that said manual therapy does not increase the risk of cervical arterial dissection. This is consistent with a lot of other research that has been published, as well as the World Health Organization, all of which had said that manipulation is not a causative factor, rather patients who are having a stroke seek care from either a provider of medicine or chiropractic and go on to have a stroke at the same rate. The manipulation is not the cause, it's a piece of that process that did not contribute, in much the same way that an antacid did not contribute to the patient's stomach cancer. Unfortunately, that news hasn't made it to everyone, because the same study said that those cases of cervical arterial dissection and the association with manipulation is overreported. A lot of them are single case studies, and others are surveys of neurologists primarily, that have in their quotes methodological flaws that are not able to establish a causation. That's great news for you and I. It's going to give us a lot of help in the future with those types of problems. But we also have to realize that what we do is, with, is not without risk. And we want to be aware of those patients who may be in the process of developing a stroke while we're seeing them. The paper gave us some great information. Number one, the history of those patients. They present with the types of conditions that you and I see regularly. Neck pain, headaches, and vertigo. The concerning headache presentation is one that's new, it's unilateral, it's sudden. Maybe it's a periorbital location, sometimes uh, into the anterior aspect of the neck as well. Maybe suboccipital, the things that we see, but a lot of times it is consistent with a migraine type headache or a cluster headache, except it's different from what the patient's had before. When it comes to cervical spine pain, neck pain, the things that we're looking for again are new and different. But especially if it's sudden, severe, sharp, and especially if there's a throbbing component to it. Those are concerning signs. The thing about the headaches and neck pain that are related to a vascular issue is they're not relieved by over-the-counter pain medication usually. And they're not changed by our manual or provocative testing of moving the patient's head or neck around. Finally, vertigo that's most concerning is when the patient says that they're not just a little lightheaded, but the room is spinning or they're spinning. Especially if it's constant, that's a lot more concerning presentation. We'll also look at risk factors, that the study identified several risk factors, including environmental risk factors of having a prior respiratory tract infection, especially recently, a vitamin B deficiency, a low BMI, or that you're a smoker. It also looked at some inherited risk factors of maybe a family member who had a cervical arterial dissection or a stroke, or a connective tissue disorder like Marfan's. Finally, when it comes to the exam, we want to pay special attention to the lower cranial nerves, uh, particularly in cases of an internal carotid stroke. We want to check for hypertension, see if there's any swelling, especially in the anterior aspect of the neck, or if there's midline tenderness in the posterior aspect of the neck, not a good sign if there's nuchal tenderness. Sometimes a radiculopathy along the C5-6 distribution can be more indicative of an internal carotid stroke, so we want to be especially attentive to those presentations. If we've ruled those things out, then we can move on with care. If the patient has more than two concerning symptoms or more than two concerning signs, I should say two or more concerning, the paper recommended immediate or emergent medical consult because there's certainly a chance of stroke and we need to rule that out if the patient's in that process. If we rule those out or if the patient does have, doesn't have those alarming signs, we can move forward with greater confidence. The good news is those signs usually don't occur in isolation. Usually at least a couple of them are present. If we do treat the patient, the, pa the paper finally had some good recommendations as far as trying to focus our attention on one segment as, far as, as opposed to a gross mobilization of the cervical spine. Minimizing the amount of force we use, especially that force at end range and especially if that force is in rotation. I hope that you like this information. If you're a ChiroUp subscriber, you can log on to ChiroUp.com, go into the Clinical Resources tab, and download two awesome infographics we've just put together for this. Usually it takes 10 years in order to get this information from a paper into clinical practice. We've slimmed that down to about two days. And if you log on as a subscriber, you'll have information in an infographic for you as far as what are the concerning presentations and exam findings and information for your patient about the four most uh, important studies that have come out that said, no, chiropractic does not cause this. It's an innocent bystander in that process. So save you some time explaining it as part of your informed consent process. If you're not sure if you're a ChiroUp subscriber, well, you're not. You're probably a subscriber to Facebook or the blog. 
we'd love you to become a subscriber and we'd also love to give you those papers. If you're willing to try us out, go to CairoUp.com, sign up for your free trial. You'll be able to log on and use all the resources that our subscribers do for the first two weeks. We think that you'll love it. We hope that you'll stick with us. You'll be part of our wolf pack that are working together to improve chiropractic outcomes, improve our safety, and make our profession the undeniable best choice for patients and payers alike. I hope you like this information, and I look forward to connecting again. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.